Okay, so we've now got a custom test scene created, and we also have our prefab player object. Let's scale this guy down. Okay, but at the moment, our player doesn't do anything. We need to fix this. So we're going to use the new input system, which we have to enable. So we're going to go back into the package manager, Unity registry, and we're going to search for input system. So version 1.2. And we're going to install it. And it's going to ask us if we want to restart Unity because it has to do, make some quite sort of fundamental changes. The reasons why we want to use this new input system is it lets us map a whole bunch of commands for different controllers, keyboards, and to be able to actually switch in those buttons quite easily through code. So here we go, it's saying, project's using the new input system, but native pl platform backends for the new input system are not enabled in the player settings, saying that input from these devices won't come through. We need to restart and then turns off all the old versions. So that is what we want to be doing. So we're just going to let that close and then restart. And it should all happen automatically. And it shouldn't take too long. And we're now back in. And we've got this new input system on. And we're going to basically we're going to apply this all onto our player prefab. So we're just going to double click on that player prefab. So we're now in and editing it. And so we can add these commands onto the different components, but the best place is to put them on the parent object. So what we're going to first do is add player input. And the other advantage of this system is that we can actually do local multiplayer quite quickly and easily. Okay, so by default, there's no actions. We can just click on create actions and it will make some def like a default set. So that is one way of doing this. So that, that's one way. Okay. Create actions. Choose a folder. Uh, I'll probably make a new folder called input actions. Note we're still just using Pascal case. And let's just call it Default pre-made input actions. Okay, it sounds like there's a little error here. Now we've got this option up, and what this one comes pre-made with is we're dealing with UI and also moving the player. So we've got move with the left stick, looking with the right stick, or the mouse, and fire but we haven't actually coded this to do anything at the moment. But what we're going to do is go back to our player. And if it hasn't already dragged it on, we're going to drag this pre-made input actions onto here. And we can tell the computer which camera we want to use. So we'll take that one. And the default input mode, we can just leave that as it is. And so that is our first stage. But if we hit play, yep, nothing happens because we haven't actually done anything with it. We are getting this error message to audio listeners are on the scene. That is because we have a camera here as an audio listener. And if we go back to the scene, there's a main camera here with an audio listener. So let's just remove that component. And so now when we run it, we shouldn't get that error message. Awesome. Okay, so we've now gone and set up our default input actions. What we're going to do is a slight different way and have this actually enabled through code. It will just make our lives a bit easier later on. So we're just going to click on default pre-made, put a little tick next to that and click apply and that will just convert everything that's in this input actions into some code that we can reuse and it's just a great big JSON file so we can sort of see for fire it's a button type 
and here's what we can do with it and it's the bindings like what keys are able to be used for different things okay that concludes our first part of just getting the input actions set up the next section will involve basically creating a script and getting it to move our player character